Dear students, now we are going to discuss voltage divider bias in detail. It is also called as self bias method. It is a simple method which is widely used to provide stable operating point that is good stabilization in any electronic circuits. In order to get the maximum distortion free output, the Q point must be stable and located in the active region of the transistor. Correct? So here this voltage divided by us provides very good stabilization. This is the circuit diagram of voltage divided by us. In this R1 and R2 resistors are connected across the supply voltage VCC to provide the proper voltage divided circuit. So why do we need this voltage divided circuit? To get proper biasing at the input side. Okay. So this can be achieved by using the voltage drops across this R2 and RE. The voltage drop across this R2 forward biases the base emitter junction at the same time. The voltage drop across this emitter resistor reverse biases the junction. The Q point becomes unstable due to temperature variation. If the temperature increases, then the output current that is the collector current is getting increased. If the temperature increases means the output current is also getting increased. It will affect the stability of the Q point. Okay. So here we have to maintain this collector current as a constant one. But if the temperature increases, this collector current is also increased. In turn, this emitter current is also getting increased. Because this emitter current is equal to what? The sum of base current and collector current. Okay. If this emitter current increases means the voltage drop across this emitter resistor is also increased. In turn increasing the reverse bias to this junction. If the reverse bias is given to this junction what will happen? It will decrease the base current. Do you understand this relation? Okay. If this base current is decreased, what will happen? The relation between the output current IC to this base current is current amplification factor. Okay. From this we can get the output current is equal to what? Beta into IB. If this IB is decreased automatically, this IC is also getting decreased. So we can maintain the collector current as a constant one. Do you all understand this relation? So that's what given here. Due to temperature rise or parameter variation, IC tends to increase. If the collector current increases, then the current through this RE is also getting increased. If it is increased means the voltage drop across this RE also increases. It will increase what? Reverse bias to the base emitter junction. If it gives the reverse bias to the base emitter junction, then the base current is getting decreased. Okay. If it is decreased means here the collector current is also getting decreased. Then we can maintain the collector current as a constant one. Do you all understand this procedure? Okay. It can be used as a constant current source. Next we are going to analyze the stability factor for this voltage divider bias. For our analysis, we have to consider Thevenin's equivalent circuit. What is Thevenin's equivalent circuit? That voltage source in series with the resistor. Here this voltage divider circuit can be drawn like this. This R1 and R2 parallel combination can be represented as the base resistor. So we can draw this Thevenin's equivalent circuit like this. Here Vt represents Thevenin's voltage, Rv represents the parallel combination of R1 and R2. Do you all understand this Thevenin circuit? So from this circuit we can write the base resistor is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 that is equal to R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So here we can say this base resistor is nothing but Thevenin's resistor and also the Thevenin's voltage is equal to R2 because the voltage across this R2 is nothing but Thevenin's voltage. So R2 into VCC divided by R1 plus R2 that is the Thevenin's voltage. So next we are going to find out this IB value. Okay for that we have to apply KVL 
to this base loop okay so what is kvl kirchhoff's voltage law okay so here voltage rise is equal to the sum of voltage drops so here vt is equal to ib into rb plus vbe plus ie into re so here this ie is nothing but what ic plus ib correct so that's what given here apply kvl to base circuit we can take the expression like this vt is equal to ib rb plus vbe plus ie re ie is nothing but ic plus ib then we can multiply inside this value we are going to find out ib so we are going to take this ib as a common one from this two terms so vt is equal to ib into rb plus re plus vbe plus ic re so next we are going to find out this ib value for that we have to move these two terms to other side as minus and move this value as a denominator correct then we can get the base current ib is equal to vt minus vbe minus ic re divided by rb plus re consider this as the first equation this is the first step okay next we are going to find out the stability factor it is defined as the rate of change of the output current that is collector current with respect to the leakage current keeping the beta and vbe as constant okay so here the formula is s is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta into dib by dic so this is the formula for the stability factor consider this as the second equation so we are going to differentiate the first equation that is ib with respect to ic then substitute that value here to get the stability factor okay so for that we have to differentiate the first equation with respect to ic dib by dic is equal to d by dic into what is the first equation vt minus vbe minus ic re by rb plus re so this term is independent of ic so it becomes 0 similarly here it is 0 this term becomes minus re by rb plus re okay if we are going to differentiate with respect to ic means it becomes 1 right so we can get dib by dic is equal to minus re by rb plus re consider this as the third equation we are going to substitute this third equation in the second equation okay here the stability factor s is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta into dib by dic is replaced with this value minus re divided by rb plus re okay so multiply this minus and minus as plus okay so the stability factor s is equal to what 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into re by rb plus re so this is very important formula okay for further simplification we are going to divide all the terms within this bracket by re okay so here we can get s is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into re by re divided by rb plus re plus re by re then this term becomes what 1 here it is 1 do you all understand this one then we can get s is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 plus beta into 1 by 1 plus rb by re then we have to take this denominator as a common one in this side then 1 plus beta divided by this one is multiplied with this value so 1 plus rb by re plus beta divided by 1 plus rb by re then we have to move this value to this numerator okay then we can get the stability factor as 1 plus beta into 1 plus rb by re divided by 1 plus beta into rb by re if this rb value is too small if it is too small when compared with this re what will happen this rb by re okay so this ratio is negligible one it's almost equal to zero okay if it is zero means this term becomes zero and this term becomes zero then we can get s is equal to what one plus beta by one plus beta that is equal to one so here the stability factor is equal to what one this is the smallest possible value of the stability factor to get the maximum thermal stability next we are going to derive an another stability factor s yes dash it is defined as the rate of change of the output collector current with respect to base emitter voltage keeping this beta and ico as a constant one this is the definition in common emitter circuit the current amplification factor beta is equal to what 
output current by input current from this IC is equal to beta into IB. Then we have to substitute that IB value from the first equation here. So here IC is equal to what beta into IB is VT minus VBE minus ICRE by RB plus RE. So here we have to move this beta to this side as denominator. IC is available in both the sides. So we have to move all the ICs in the same side. So here IC by beta and this minus becomes plus this side. So C by beta plus ICRE by RB plus RE that is equal to VT minus VBE by RB plus RE. Okay, then we can take this IC as a common term. Okay, so IC into 1 by beta plus RE by RB plus RE. Then we can take that LCM here. RB plus RE plus RE into beta divided by beta into RB plus RE. That is equal to VT minus VBE divided by RB plus RE. Then we have to move this term to this side as a reciprocal. Then we can get IC is equal to VT minus VBE by RB plus RE into this term becomes numerator. This one becomes denominator. Then we can simplify this thing. Then we can get IC is equal to beta into VT minus VBE by RB plus 1 plus beta into RE. We are going to differentiate this IC with respect to VBE to get S dash. Okay. So here differentiating this term with respect to VBE. Then we can get this value as beta into 0. Here this value is what? Minus 1 divided by Rb plus 1 plus beta into Re. So that's what given here. S dash is equal to minus beta divided by Rb plus 1 plus beta into Re. So this is the S dash value. Okay. Similarly, we can get S double dash. It is the rate of change of the output collector current with respect to beta keeping this ICO and VBE as constant. So its value is IC by beta into RE plus RB by 1 plus beta RE plus RB. Okay. Finally, we are going to discuss the advantages of self-bias method over other biasing methods because this self-bias method is widely used in many applications. Okay. So here first we can consider fixed bias method. In this method the stability factor is equal to 1 plus beta which is very high. Okay then it provides very poor stability hence it is not widely used in electronic circuits. So next one is collector to base bias method. In this method the stability factor is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 plus beta into RC by RC plus RB. When this RC value is very small, here this S value becomes 1 plus beta because RC is small means what? This term becomes 0. Then it is equal to 1 plus beta. That is similar to the fixed bias method. It provides poor stability. So we have to maintain the condition either RC as larger value or RB as a smaller value for better stability. Okay, there is a constraint. That's why it is not widely used. Okay, then the voltage divider bias method. So in this method, the stability factor is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 plus beta into RE by RE plus RB. It can also be written like this. 1 plus beta into 1 plus RB by RE divided by 1 plus beta plus RB by RE. So whenever this RB by RE value is very small, that is the base resistor value is too small when compared with this RE. Here this RB by RE term becomes 0. If it is 0 means what will happen? 1 plus beta, 1 plus beta both can be cancelled. We can get S is equal to 1. Do you all understand this one? This is very very important point. So this self bias provides very high stability hence it is widely used in many applications okay